Greetings once again, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, perhaps uh, that's a, a little bit of a call to assembly. Remember that old song and sound and whatever it was? Uh, remember it from camp? Some of you remember it perhaps from uh, your service in the armed forces, and some of you don't even know what it is. But uh, there it was, a call to assemble, and hopefully uh, on this Thursday, where we oftentimes have a little bit of disruption in our lives, but we get through it so we can uh, think about being leaders and uh, perhaps uh, think a little bit about the future on Monday. No, we do that on Friday so that we'll be ready for Monday. Interesting ideas of the program. My name is Stan Houston, and we're here to try and help you just take 15 or 20 minutes, maybe even less, to uh, think about something that might be helpful and useful. And uh, right now, I would like a uh, raise your hands, please. And uh, let's see if I can even feel it. Okay. Uh, this weekend in the United States, and I guess it's in many parts of the world, though it uh, varies from place to place, uh, it will be uh, daylight savings time. And because of that, we'll move the clock ahead one hour so that we have uh, more daylight in the evening. But, of course, we have less daylight in the morning. Uh, how many of you are in favor of daylight savings time? Raise your hand. Hmm. How many of you think we should just uh, do what my friends do, and that's they just stay the same? <laughs> they just stay on standard time the whole year round, and they don't have it. Well, that's an interesting discussion, and uh, perhaps uh, we can talk about that uh, after we do it on Sunday. I've been uh, doing a lot of work in terms of studying about, you know, the nature of time and uh, the circadian rhythms that we all have. And, uh, of course, uh, they claim that uh, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, accidents and even deaths occur more than normal around the change of times. Well, what do you think about that? Today I want to talk about something that uh, just struck me from many, many years ago because I think it's important right now as we're seeking how we can live through these challenging times and how we can present ourselves, our services, our business in such a way that we will have more power. Uh, I give leadership to a uh, podcast on prayer and it's called More Power to You. And uh, uh, we're talking about that, how we can receive more personal and uh, spiritual, uh, emotional, relational, uh, maybe even physical power in our lives. More power to you. And uh, one of the most significant books I ever read was written by a friend who I met in the book and then met her at a kind of the cancer bed of a friend. And uh, I might talk a little bit about that. And the book was called Real Power. So it is Thursday, and we're going to do some power stories here on Interesting Ideas. Please stay tuned, raise your hands, and uh, participate. Use the power you have to talk back, to reciprocate, to uh, perhaps uh, be a part of the show. The program begins right now. Okay, here we go, and uh, one of the things that will be interesting, ask people what they think about daylight savings time. You know, this is, uh, this is the weekend, uh, and of course what's going to happen is that uh, uh, a number of people are going to show up late for church <laughs> and place of worship on Sunday, uh, but that's the way it works. It always does, uh, and uh, they'll, they'll be early <laughs> in November on that Sunday. Always happens. Okay, uh, here's where we go. The subject of power is important. And um, I want you just, first of all, to understand that if it is of a concern to you, I mean, you, you talk about power dynamics and the things of you know, personal power, marketing power. One of the books that was life-changing for me was a book written by a woman named Janet Hagberg, and it was called Real Power. 
And I, I got a copy of her book, and uh, she simply said, more power to you. And uh, that was it. Uh, she was from my hometown of uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. And uh, I got the book while I was living in Europe. And I returned to Minneapolis, St. Paul, and uh, I had recommended and read the book often. And what happened was that one of our dear friends uh, was in the hospital because uh, she'd been diagnosed with cancer. And so we were there at the hospital and uh, hopefully making plans for her surgery and recovery. And there was a woman uh, standing there. And uh, her name was Janet. And she said to Janet, <laughs> she said, she, her name was Janet. She says, this is, I'm Janet, of course you know me, but this is my friend Janet. And, and she, I said, Janet. And she said, Janet Hagberg. And I said, you're my hero. <laughs> And she was the author of the book, and we, we became friends. It was just an off and on again thing, a discussion, but the book will really be significant to you. It's uh, still in print, but if not, there's a whole, thousands of uh, used copies around, and that's always good because you can see how other people responded to the book. I always buy the most used, marked-up books I can to see what other people thought who bought the book before me. That's fun to do. And um, go from there. Now, part of that goes back, because I'm trying to help people with some of their presentations and how they will give a speech or give a performance, because that's so vital in our work today. And I have done a, a lot of speaking. And at one time, uh, I was asked to speak uh, to, it was primarily a woman's group. It was uh, a, it was a products that women would use and sell. And uh, th there are a variety of those, but I was asked to speak to that a little bit about how to market yourself and, of course, then market your products. And I gave my presentation. Now, you have to understand that when uh, I give presentations, I, I, basically it's me. And I have toys or props, you know, oftentimes toys or props that I use. And uh, that's what I do, you know, whether it's I, when I was talking to people about, uh, <laughs> to a group of firefighters, I had a big fire truck and I talked about that and used sample examples from the fire truck to illustrate some of the uh, principles of life that I was talking about. That's what I do. And uh, I gave my presentation and all of a sudden, after it was all done, I was there and visiting. This very strong and rather powerful, you could just tell, st started striding forward toward me, and I, I just kind of caught her out the side of my eye, and I said, oh, is she mad at me? And uh, she came right up to me and looked me straight in the eye, and she says, you don't use PowerPoint, do you? You don't use PowerPoint, do you? And I said, well, well, no. And then she said, Good for you. Good for you. Because when you use PowerPoint, you give up your power. You give up your own power. And then she turned and quickly walked away. <laughs> Obviously a little bit of a memorable incident. But my point is, there are so many things that we do in which we give away the power that we have and oftentimes give away the power that God <laughs> has given us. Now, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, arrogance or anything like that, but the personal power that comes from, you know, confideo, with faith, confidence, with clarity. There, there are a whole lot of ways that we can... Uh, have and even exude and express some personal power that hopefully is more attractive than repulsive. But please keep in mind, there are many, many people who are put off by people who have power because they're so powerless. And it will never be an easy balance between being humble, which you must have as a part of your life portfolio, and again, the confidence and the personal power that comes from maturity and mastery and mystery and living well. So I simply ask you the question, are you in any way giving up your God-given good power 
in how you act and how you do things. Now, caveat. Go back to my friend Janet. She points out that oftentimes there's a difference. You know, you give away your power. The power you should have. But there are a lot of people who then go through the stages of how they attempt to go from powerlessness to powerful. And some of them are very helpful and useful, and some of them are not very nice. But that's what happens. Right now, I'm dealing with a daughter who one of the new persons in her office has given a middle position, and she just says she's out (laughs) to run things and run some of us off. She's out to run things, and the way she's going to do that is try to run some of us off. How do we deal with that? Well, if that's you, perhaps this might be a little bit helpful. But it's 11 minutes, and I'm only going to take about three minutes more, so uh, let's take a quick break. I'm going to sip a little coffee, and then we're going to finish up And uh, get ready to face Good Friday. Yeah, because every Friday is going to be a little bit good. And then get ready for Daylight Savings Time. I'm Stan Houston. The program is Interesting Ideas. And we'll be right back. What Janet Hagberg says is that, uh, her example is, one of the persons who has the most power in the world at that time was Mother Teresa. And why was she so powerful? Because she had given up all her power. All of the things that go into having power, you know, wealth, possessions, property, By giving up your power, no one can power you. They can't have any leverage on you. And she said, oftentimes what you will discover that people are most powerful when they are no longer seeking it or even seeking to preserve it or even seeking to possess it anymore. Could it be? Not giving away your power that is helpful and useful, but when you give up your power, is there something spiritual, emotional, relational, maybe even physical, that happens that in some ways you become your most powerful? Think about that. Talk about that. And see if... uh, We can help you. First of all, uh, what we do is we try to make sure that we're helping people discover some of the ideas that truly will give them insight into the world and in a good way have the power to influence others and maybe even the emotional power for, for good make an impact and then have the power of attraction so that good things begin to come to you. You don't have to grab them or take them away. They come to you. That's part of what income is. So if we can help you do that kind of work, and particularly if you have a small group, business, organization, or team that wants to learn how to be really good at insight, influence, impact, income, and leadership, I think we have some Clues and suggestions and recommendations that might help you. So reach out to me at stanhusted at gmail.com. stanhusted at gmail.com. We've done a number of programs recently. We just did a program on the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience, uh, episode six. And uh, check that out. Ask me how to get there if you care. We also did a program uh, for... uh, How to be a world-class podcaster. And this is you gain power by knowing 
the secret formula. If you'd like to know more about that, reach out and ask me. And we also are helping people who are in the uh, business that I have been in. Uh, that is a religious or spirit-led broadcasting. And uh, we're helping them uh, be really good at what they do. And uh, we taught them uh, what we call the broadcaster's one-word prayer. The broadcaster's one-word prayer. All of that's a little bit of a clickbait and mystery, but... Uh, that's out there, and we'd be grateful to show you where you might find some help there. All the best, all the blessings, always close the benediction. That gives you great, great power to know that you can do that for one another and maybe even do it for yourself. All the best and blessings to you, and we'll see what comes to us on Friday, because right now I don't know, but I have a few ideas. And... Uh, you be in touch. Again, stanhouston at gmail.com, stanhouston at gmail.com. You don't need a 50-minute or an hour-and-a-half podcast. We got all of these questions and suggestions and a few stories all done in 15 minutes. My, how do we do that? Hey, take care. We'll see you around. Bye for now.